Hello everyone and welcome to the second tutorial of our beginner series. Today we're going to be talking about starting hands, which cards to play. And as always, you can find us at hobnob.games. So last time we talked about uh, a little bit about winning poker strategy, but today I want to talk about the very first decision you have to make when you sit down at the poker table. And that is which cards you should you be playing, which hands you should be folding, and which hands you should be raising with. And there are lots of starting two-hand cards that you could get. You know, ace-deuce, seven-ten offsuit, king-five offsuit. In fact, it turns out that there are 1,326 possible starting hands that you can be dealt. So of all these hands, which one should you be playing? Well, lucky for us, these 1,326 cards can be uh, grouped into 169 meaningful groups of hands. And even though 169 is still a big number, it's much more manageable than our 1,326. So what do we mean by a meaningful hand? Well, meaningful hand means that, you know, if you had the seven of spades and eight of diamonds, that has the exact same value, at least pre-flop, as the seven of spades with the eight of clubs, which is the same as the spade is seven of spades with the eight of hearts. All these cards are equal in value. So essentially, we can just group them all together into one meaningful group of hands that we might call seven, eight offsuit. Uh, we could also put them into suited categories. So seven, eight of spades, seven, eight of clubs, seven, eight of hearts, seven, eight of diamonds. You know, one suit is no more valuable than any other suit. So these are all have the exact same value pre-flop. And we could put these four groups uh, into one or four groups of hands into one group called seven, eight suited. Now, if we were to take all of these 169 meaningful hands and put them into a matrix of a table, we would get our starting hand table that looks just like this. And so for instance, here's our eight, seven suited group of hands that we talked about and our eight, seven offsuit hand. Now this table is absolutely essential and it's equivalent and analogous to the periodic table of elements that you find in chemistry. Every chemist knows the periodic table of elements backwards and forwards because this table is the foundation from which all chemistry is built. The exact same in poker. Every good poker player knows this table backwards and forwards because this is the foundation from which all poker strategy is built upon. So let's take a little bit of time to get to know our starting hand table. Uh, it starts with, you know, if we look at the diagonal, the, the green squares are all of our pocket pairs. It starts at the very top with, with pocket aces um, and includes on down to pocket kings, pocket nines, all the way down to pocket twos. So we can find all of our pocket pair combinations in the uh, green diagonal across the table. And all of the blue squares above the diagonal, we find all of our suited hands. That's what the S stands for uh, in the blue squares. So for instance, we can see uh, on the bottom below our diagonal in the red squares are all of our offsuit hands. And so the O after all of these stands for offsuit. Now, if we look at the top row, we find all of our suited aces. So it starts with hands like, you know, ace, king suited. And again, it doesn't matter which suit, we're gonna group ace, king of diamonds, ace, king of hearts, ace, king of clubs, and ace, king of spades are all represented in this one blue cell here. Uh, includes hands like ace, 10 suited, all the way down to ace, deuce suited. Uh, we can also, for instance, look at our suited jacks are all represented in this row here. Includes hands like, you know, jack, 10 suited, jack, six suited, jack, four suited. We also have to look at our offsuit. For instance, if we look at the first column, it includes all of our offsuit aces. So hands like ace king offsuit, ace 10 offsuit, on down to ace deuce offsuit. If you look at the diagonal right above our pocket pair diagonal, this is another very important set of cards because these cards are what we call suited connectors. Suited because they have the same suit and connected because they come one right after the other consecutively. And one reason why we care about this group of hands is because even if 7A isn't that big of a hand in terms of uh, the absolute value of it, because it's suited, it has a higher probability of making flushes. And because it's connected, it has an increased probability of making straights. If you combine these two together, an increased probability of both straights and flushes, it makes it a very powerful hand. So we care a lot about suited connectors. So it include things like 7A suited, King Queen suited, uh, Jack 10 suited would all be examples. So of these, which cards should you be playing? If you're just a beginner player, you need to play a very conservative or a very tight set of cards pre-flop. Uh, it's kind of like taking a, a weapon with you into battle. You know, if you're not the strongest person going into battle, you want to make certain that you're taking a gun 
uh, in, into a knife fight. Because if, if it's the other way around and you're taking a knife into a gunfight, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. So what hands are strong enough that we would want to play them? Well, certainly a lot of the big pocket pairs, pocket aces and pocket kings, very obvious. I would recommend all the way down to pocket nines. So all these pocket pairs are strong enough where we're willing to go into battle with these hands. You know, some of our suited aces, our big suited aces, ace king through ace 10 suited, uh, because of their probability, they can make nut flushes, but they can also make big straights. Um, you'll notice I'm skipping ace nine through ace six. Um, these are not particularly strong hands. Yes, they can make nut flushes, but they have a hard time making straights. And because they have a difficult time making straights, that decreases their value. So maybe when you get a little bit more advanced, these will be some of the first hands that we'll, we'll throw into our, our new set of hands we're gonna play. But for now in the beginning stages, they're just not strong enough to go into battle with. But the smaller ones, ace five through ace deuce, those can make nut flushes. They can also have an increased probability of making straights, making them powerful hands. So we'd wanna include those cards into cards that we're playing. Um, some of the big aces, even though they're not suited, they're still big enough. Their kicker, a king, queen, jack, and 10 are all strong enough and can make straight possibilities. These make them strong enough that we wanna play these hands. We'd also include some of these uh, suited connectors, king, queen suited all the way down to nine, eight suited. Uh, we were strong enough. The suited connectors lower than nine, eight suited, I would say stay away from those. You know, if you make a flush and all the money goes in the middle, you're probably going up against a bigger flush. And if you have trouble sniffing that out, uh, we want to avoid those hands. Uh, we also want to include like Jack, King Jack suited and King 10 suited. They can still, again, make strong flushes, strong straights, enough so that we're willing to play them. And even King Queen, even if it's off suit, that's a strong enough hand. A lot of people like to play King Jack and King 10, and you can have them dominated with King Queen. So uh, we're, we're willing to play King Queen. So this is the set of hands that if you're just at the beginner stages, I, I know it's a fairly conservative set of hands, but if you just play these hands and these hands only, I promise you it will increase your win rate in playing poker. So in our next tutorial, we'll be talking about, but why so tight? Why, why such few hands that we're playing in these beginning stages? So a very important tutorial. Uh, and as always, you can find us at hobnob.games. I look forward to seeing you for our next one.